Hi everybody, welcome to Resolve the Unsolved Forum by Panisha EBIS Consulting Group. This is our 49th webinar and based on our previous webinars, we keep on taking inputs, ideas and suggestions from entrepreneurs who are part of uh, our fraternity. They may not be able to join and participate on each webinar, but they do visit and see the videos which are uploaded on YouTube and they keep on getting back with suggestions and information which they want. Out of this context, I got an opportunity to catch up with Dr. Neeraj Mehta a couple of days back, and we got talking about a very, very important subject that was content, and content is lifeline for every organization, because that is how every organization gets to communicate with the end customer, a prospective customer to the market, to the world. And that is what brought to us to our topic today, developing content strategy and its life cycle. Uh, it's a very, very pertinent and important parameter to discuss on this important topic. I would say we are privileged to have Dr. Neeraj Mehta with us. Welcome Neeraj to the forum. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining in. Mr. Ravindra Goel might be joining a bit later because he's slightly engaged with some emergency issues. Dr. Neeraj Mehta comes with a rich experience of the corporate world of more than two decades. He is an M Pharma, PhD in drug discovery. He has done his post graduation in marketing and international business. He has a consulting experience with pharma, publishing, market research, drug discovery, preclinical pre evaluations, including leading market strategy developments. Currently, he's a partnership manager to Scholarly with TrendMD and also publishing a lifestyle consultant to India and global companies. I think today to discuss on the content, we could have nobody better than Dr. Neeraj because he is involved in a very, very crucial role where large pharma companies are engaging with the medical world and the communications are very, very critical. And he has been at the core of it. Welcome Dr. Neeraj once again. As marketers, we ensure that the content is always live. And the key is to be aware of the content life cycle. That means, is my content come engaging with the segment which I want? Is it live? Am I able to change it? I can't have one single message and keep on pumping it time and again. And today with the social media, with digital content, where the connectivity is 24 seven, people are always engaging with each other. The decision makings are much, much critical and much more crucial than might be it was. It was important a couple of decades back too also, but today it's very, very critical. To start off with, I would uh, like to ask Dr. Mehta, Dr. Mehta, what would you say is the purpose of a content strategy? Why is it so important? Please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Sandeep, for, uh, for such a wonderful uh, introduction. And it has been a great privilege for me to work with you for a couple of years during our tenure in Wiley also. Uh, you know, it's it's very, very important uh, for corporates in general, and I would say publishing and life sciences industry in particular, because I've been dealing with the, both these segments since last almost 15 years, uh, not only to create uh, a content which has got uh, very good stickiness with the end users, but also to develop kind of strategies to take the right content to the right user. That has been the overall, very looking for, it could be, you know, uh, an article, it could be a book published by uh, a publisher, it could be a blog, it could be a course developed by uh, any corporate, you know, taking that particular piece of content and putting in front of the right user at the right time is something which is uh, all the organizations are running after. And you rightly said with the, uh, with the SEO uh, marketing, with the uh, social media marketing coming in, a lot of things have changed. And uh, 
uh, I'm, I'm happy to be consulting another company called TrendMD, which is uh, assisting both publishers as well as pharma, taking together both the kind of audience and helping them to reach out to their end audience, which is researchers, doctors, uh, profs working in universities, and peeping people working in the labs. And, and this has, this has uh, uh, got a huge importance uh, because content is abundant. With the yes. click of the button, you've got millions of articles, millions of websites, and it's it's very difficult for any kind of a marketer to differentiate themselves or to stand apart and uh, be visible. I would say be discoverable uh, to the end audience. That is the main uh, motive of any any marketer right right now nowadays. I would say. Very true. Very true. In fact, uh, Dr. I like to emphasize: we are all familiar with. Uh, a very uh, prominent sentence which says that you will never get a second chance to make a first impression, right? Absolutely. So the impact, as you rightly pointed out, one would create through the website, through the communication uh, channels, through the literature, through the published materials which are going on, keeps the segment engaged and involved. That's very, very crucial. And you rightly pointed out because Communication is important and content thereby has to be very, very pertinently taken care of because it informs, it educates, and it helps generate, generate interest for your product or for your services. And that's the purpose of content strategy. Uh, to bring the case in context, uh, Dr. Matthew, would you like to share at this stage before we go further, any case, maybe without naming a name organization as such, where you might have experienced a content Proper content strategy actually worked wonders. Yeah, I mean, uh, without naming any any right. clients, we work with almost we work with almost like four fifty uh, publishers globally, and uh, the solution we are offering is sort of installed on uh, right. almost like five thousand journals. So I'll give you a very good example of a of a publisher uh, who is a preferred client, a publisher who is uh, one of the authority in uh, medical content. Uh, See, every publisher struggles with four or five kind of things right now. Uh, the very the very first and utmost important uh, thing for any publisher is to grow readership and build the brand awareness. True. And then uh, increase user engagement, uh, increase the citations, in, increase the impact factor of the journals uh, indirectly in a way. Uh, another challenge with which almost uh, every publisher struggles is to attract new authors. Increase submissions in the journals, uh, increase revenue uh, of all their publications, and strategically promote content and increase enrollments. Uh, not only for their journals, books, but also for some kind of uh, you know uh, continuing professional development programs or continuing medical education programs they are running in at their websites. So uh, we worked with a publisher who was kind of uh, uh, trying to increase the. Uh, the, uh, the awareness of one of their open access journal. And uh, we as a solution provider, what we do is uh, we kind of install a very powerful uh, widget free of cost on journal websites. So okay. what we do is once the widget is installed on the uh, on any journal, through the cookies of the end user or the uh, reader, and there are about 20 odd footprints uh, of the reader, which we can recognize, True. Our, our very powerful AI tool uh, start recommending similar articles from the same publisher. Okay. So imagine somebody looking for an article on cigarette uh, cessation or something. S immediately that column or that widget will start recommending four or five different articles from the same publisher. Wonderful. And the chances of the user in shifting from the existing article to those five, four or five new articles is very much. So indirectly, it increases the chances of the user not losing his focus and not going to any other source rather than the same publisher offering them uh, similar content. And I show in a while when, uh, when I share my screen, sure. an ongoing study which has been going on since last almost 15 years in which hundreds and thousands of researchers, doctors, students, profs working in universities, uh, scientists working in uh, labs have been interviewed. And the single most important factor for all those end audience to come back to a journal is uh, looking for similar articles. Wonderful. Now, journals or publishers lacking those abilities uh, have fair chances of losing that kind of audience. Whereas the solution which we are providing is free of cost, number one. 
Number two, it recommends similar articles from the same publisher, as well as some more articles from the other publisher. Now, the 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 existing publisher was uh, uh, had a lot of apprehensions. Why should I recommend articles from the other publishers? Yeah. But we have got a business model in which if somebody clicks on the external article, the present publisher gets some credits, and he can use the same credits to market his content on on the other publisher websites. So okay. we are kind of trying uh, to create an ecosystem in which there are hundreds and thousands of publishers and journals cross collaborating, cross uh, referencing, uh, and and uh, collaborating in a way that uh, they've got a bigger audience, a bigger uh, ecosystem to play. So we were happy to we were happy to increase the usage of that particular journal in six months by more than twenty eight percent. But that is true. Like uh, for the audience, like as you're talking about journals. See what's very 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 important thing which I'd like to bring in bring back the discussion too. Whatever aspect it is, it is not only the content; it is the richness and the quality of the content is very very imperative. I'll share a case with you without again naming a company. Like like we were working uh, with a company which is into oil and gas sector. Coming on to it, a surprising statement is three three and a half years back we changed the entire web content. The pictures, the images, the write-ups, the addresses, and coming onto it, supported with a lot of blogs and research articles, because they deal in very very high value projects. And I'm telling you, the responses from the biggies in that sector were favorable. They started responding. They started communicating. They started engaging. So, as you rightly pointed out, it is not about giving out anything free when we are. Actually, sharing content when we are actually communicating, and when we are doing it with specifically an intelligent group or a high-value product, it needs much more research. Not to say that the low-value products don't need research, but the fact is, everywhere we need a strategic investment and a lot of creativity to look into what kind of a content, how it has to be positioned, how frequently, and with digital uh, medium taking the forefront, the need and the speed is much more today. So you have to be onto it. Twenty-four-seven, right? As we go across, uh, anybody, if anybody has any query, they can put it on the chat, or they can raise hands. We can come back, and uh, during the session, as we are interacting, we can also address your query if you have any. Feel free to share it with us. Okay, Neeraj, coming to the next uh, very very critical thing which I had in my mind, I just noted it down. We, you brought in a word call or a term call which I noted down called discoverability, right? absolutely now what are the trends in discoverability it's a very powerful and a nice word for an organization because when i'm communicating through content people are able to discover so what are the trends in discoverability well that's that's the key uh, uh, important point regarding which a lot of uh, publishers a lot of pharma companies life sciences companies services and you, as you rightly said Uh, content is the key backbone. Uh, it is very important to create a crispy content which increases stickiness of the end users. They they love to come back to the site or they like to spend more time on your site rather than the the, the competitors. But more important becomes the discoverability. Uh, how would you differentiate and how would you put front put in front of your end users the right content at the right time? That okay. so may happen through several channels. I remember uh, a decade ago. Uh, brochures pamphlets you know sending in letters emailers and other things were the key uh, key process through which the marketing was done by publishers and uh, other other corporates but moving on ai is playing a, a, a big role in in making your content discoverable yes uh, now as i was explaining you the the the, the key model on which trendmd works uh, we kind of uh, read the mind of the end user who is consuming the content so what kind okay. of articles what kind of content he has been consuming in the past what kind of content he would love to read what kind of content he is working on what kind of research he is doing right now and we put forward the right similar content in front of his eyes so that the okay. chances of him i know going to those kind of similar content is very high so that is how we make the content discoverable uh, in front of the right audience at the right time If I can uh, share my, if I can share my screen, I'll, I'll, I'll. I will give you, I will give you the host rights. I made you the host. 
I just you can share your screen. screen. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is uh, we install uh, this hold on for a while. So this was uh, the widget I was talking about. So I am right now uh, on the homepage of a publisher who work with us. So this is the widget we have installed on the journal. And the widget immediately start recommending similar articles. So, okay. So our AI tool basically is reading the mind of the uh, reader of this content and recommending similar articles, thereby increasing discoverability or presence or appearance of these articles in front of the end user. So the chances of the user going in for similar content is very, very high. The consumption of the content of the publisher increases multi-posts. And this is being powered by TrendMD. This, this is absolutely free. We are kind of creating a big ecosystem. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as I was showing, uh, probably you know it's consuming a lot of bandwidth. I was showing you that uh, once the reader is on on any of the journals, uh, our AI tool kind of uh, start recommending similar articles, articles would which the end user would love to read, thereby increasing the discoverability of the content being published by the publisher. So that is how we were able to increase the usage of a particular journal or a particular publisher by more than 28% in less than six months. Okay. So what you're recommending and what you are uh, sharing with us is with the use of technology, with the use of artificial intelligence, today what is happening is if I have a website of my company or my product or my information which I want to share and I'm reaching out and communicating to my end user or my partner, I can engage qualitatively by identifying his or her interest area and accordingly share more information, which helps me engage with the end user or my partner constructively, right? Absolutely. And, and, and there, are, there, are, there are facilities, there are uh, flexibilities in the system, which allows you not only to geo-target your ad on a particular territory, not only to target an uh, ad to a, to, to a particular audience in a, in a particular subject area, but we can also look into the mind of the end user, uh, what he has been consuming in the past, what he has been uh, looking for in on the other websites and put forward only that content which he would love to read rather than taking him to a sea of content and, and he get lost or he goes to some other site. We uh, engage him and uh, hook him to the website for a longer period of time. Wonderful. So what we are slowly coming onto as a new strategy, I would say, the basic uh, parameters of a counter strategy by and large remain the same. But what happens is because of technology enablement, I need to be more specific in my content strategy. I cannot have a general content which may appeal to a small segment and not to a larger one. But today I have a choice where I can be very specific to each of my prospective partner or consumer base and accordingly address and keep on engaging. So that brings to a very, very interesting context in the content strategy and which is very, very crucial, be a small operator or a large operator. See, the hunger is until and unless we all reach out to my prospective customer or my partner, my business is not complete. And today, as Dr. Nigaj, you rightly pointing out, it is not about a very large strategy, having a very large uh, marketing team, having uh, tens or fifties of uh, people working in a team and trying to work it out. Even today, if I'm in a B2B business, it's become very, very critical. A lot of time it was a stage where people in a B2B business lost out on creating content and communicating. It is as if I know the customer and the customer will take the product or the content or get it published for me. But today what happens is, as Dr. Nina, you pointed out that customer is also been bombarded and exposed to qualitative content strategy being implemented by my competitor. If today, if I have understood you rightly, we are not realigning or changing our content strategy, whether I'm a banker or a financer or a publisher, any aspect of it, it comes in. It fits in wonderfully because publishing is a core of it. And you're sitting at the content level. So you understand it very, very precisely as such. Now, <clears throat> there's one more thing. There's a guideline around content messaging, right, Dr. Nidaj? So when we talk about the guideline around content messages, okay, before we come to the specific, what could be the top 
three or four pointers you would like to bring forward as a guideline for content as a message well i hope i'm clear absolutely i mean uh, when we talk about uh, i would say marketing your content there are lots of sensitivities around how you can do that and and absolutely the laws varies from country to country and region to region uh, i i hope you're talking about the laws governing the uh, the content strategy or how to market right right and absolutely i mean there are lots of sensitivities around and guidelines uh, available in various countries when we talk about uh, email marketing and other things that the gdpr issues comes in uh, which are prevalent in other countries not so strong in the indian territory probably and when i was talking about our model of uh, reading through the cookies of uh, the end users through our ai tool uh, yes. then there are lots of hurdles for companies like us which might come in future when there is a cookie less world yes we are not able to read the cookies of the user who has not given the consent to uh, to a particular website then that becomes a challenge so these kind of guidelines uh, they govern the kind of uh, Uh, the models on which a lot of marketing companies uh, have to redesign their marketing strategies moving on uh, it, it will depend upon country to country, country basically very true very true at this stage uh, dr nilesh uh, with your permission i am trying to involve some of the participants who are there to take their views absolutely okay absolutely uh, let me check out uh, ajay are you there can you hear us Okay. Ajay is also there. Yeah. Uh, let let Ajay. I'll come to Sanjeev. You also. Ajay, if I'm right, uh, like you have been involved in a lot of uh, digital marketing strategies, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, in certain cases, uh, you have been also involved in directing. So, uh, completely pure. Digital process which you are handling with your team, right? Right. So as me and Dr. Neeraj were talking about, I just wanted your inputs, okay, to come in across across here. Your experiences when you are communicating without being seen with the entire world, okay. As a young entrepreneur, how have you gone across communicating with them? Neeraj, I just wanted to take a couple of inputs and come back to your topic. Absolutely, absolutely. Those are. Those are uh, is it? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So, how have you been going about communicating with the entire globe? So please go ahead. Product without sitting in front of them. How so how about the digital marketing at the present? What we are doing with a a lean team right now is mm -hmm. like uh, which you are telling us about that. How am I communicating with the globe without even knowing them or without even like uh, having a face to face interaction? We are using the latest trends, the latest topics which are already there in the market. We are utilizing utilizing those special uh, special keywords. like which people are uh, talking about let's say probably they're talking about the recruitment industry since i am already into this yes. recruitment and recruitment so i can talk about this so we're talking about the recruitment so there are various industries and if we go about the trend so it uh, is the company which people are mostly looking for jobs so we emphasize on most of on particularly it industry industry now we talk about like people so there are people who are more specific centered towards hr and other specific keywords like these so that's how digital marketing we are going with specific keywords which are aligning in the industry at right at present okay so what i hear here dr neeraj uh, ajay sharing with us he uses the keywords to identify as we have been talking about and why i decided to bring in ajay with his small team he has been reaching out across the world and across cross sections of his, uh, different operations and getting responses and his team spends 24 into 7 uh typically designing or calling out messages which is there uh, before we come back to the discussion i wanted prashanjit or sanjeev sanjeev you wanted to add something at this stage so uh, i'm not a tech savvy or the it like uh, ah. dr neeraj or uh, dr neeraj why i decided to bring in sanjeev over here is he is a core finance guy and he finances companies okay <laughs> health companies coming in so he also communicates So I wanted his inputs as we build onto this discussion. Yes, so I, I I just uh, you know uh, you know uh, Doctor Neeraj thrust upon the cookies and uh, the things, but uh, the person who are uh, not very tech savvy, we are much focused on suppose checking the mails or getting some input from the Google what is relevant to us, and we don't care much about what are cookies. You know, cookies popped up at times uh, which are 
quite relevant. And uh, I definitely, I understand through proactive business analytics, Mr. Dr. Neeraj is doing that. You know, I have some background from data analytics. And the point is that, uh, you know, uh, we are talking about very specific uh, kind of uh, customer or target audience for this cookies. The people like uh, people like me or my fraternity, most of us, doesn't uh, you know uh, click on or give value to the pops or the you know cookies which are appearing. So what is that? That how you can drive uh, people like us towards you know uh, the content that you want to uh, make us read. That's my small you know query that I had for myself as this point. Thank you, Nidha. Thank you, Sandeep. No, yeah. I, we wanted to have these queries. Uh, Nidha, would you like to answer that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Sanjeev, cookies is just one of the parameters which is enabling us to read the mind of the uh, the consumer of the content. I, even I'm not a tech guy. I'm, I'm from life sciences the background. But I've, what I've heard from my uh, tech team is there are more than about 20 odd parameters which we can read or anybody can read uh, to judge the kind of uh, content the user has been consuming in past, you know, broadly uh, reading the mindset of what kind of uh, stuff he would love to read. Uh, it's not only cookies, but uh, I've heard that it could be, you know, your IP address, you know, from where you can, you are accessing the content. If you're right. sitting in a hospital and you're a doctor and you're consuming content in cardiology, the system will put forward only the content in cardiology in front of you. So there could be many parameters actually. And, and uh, coming back to what we were discussing, Sandeep, earlier, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll give you another typical example of another industry I'm associated with, which is life sciences. Yeah. Uh, now, doctors are basically bread and butter for every pharma company. Sure. Uh, to give you a, a broad difference between the guidelines uh, uh, available in different countries, in India, it is impossible for any pharma company to go and target a particular doctor in a particular hospital. They yeah. can target an institute by an IP address. They can go and target PGI, AIMS, or any big hospital for that sake, for their ads to be visible only in those areas. But in US, you would be uh, amazed to uh, learn that e even a single doctor can be targeted through his unique NPA numbers. So this is how uh, a granular level of targeting is even possible. So if you tell me that I need to target Dr. X from, doctor, uh, from hospital Y, that is possible in the US because the rules allow that. But in India, it's not possible. It may come in future also. Okay. Great. So uh, through the two conversations which we had of Ajay and Sanjeev, one was a person who is not too much concerned about the cookies or what is happening. How do we reach out to them? One strategy is that. Another is I brought in Ajay as a young entrepreneur who is also trying to reach the world. So a very important thing, the messages which we are trying to exchange over here, because this platform is for purposes for learning, information sharing. So today we have not only a challenge, we have to have a very well thought out strategy. If I'm working on out of India and addressing the Indian market, what kind of a content lifecycle strategy I should have to reach out using the web, using the social media at the same time, how do I reach out to Mr. Sanjeev Banerjee, if he is not getting onto that, okay? What should the content strategy getting into it? And slowly, let's move towards completing the process. We talked about content strategy, the life cycle, okay? Does this have a life cycle? What we're trying to say and address is every communication which we have has to be, I won't say jumped, has to be modified, kept aside, a new communication has to be brought in. Every medium needs a different kind of a content presentation. Am I right, Dr. Neeraj? Okay. Absolutely. And every structure and every segment of the market will need a different kind of an appeal and a, uh, approach. As Ajay mentioned, if he is addressing the job seekers, he finds a way and he communicates and he connects with them. Okay. He communicates with the recruiters. Okay, and a very interesting thing is, we can spend a small amount of time, a small team of three people sitting out of a uh, uh, Delhi office is able to address, reach out, communicate with anybody and everybody across the globe, which was not possible before. At the same time, as you mentioned today in US, you can specifically target a person, maybe a doctor, because it is allowed and reach out to him and a specific content. 
Okay, but in India, it is general. So when we talk about the life cycle, I would like to just pull you into this discussion, slightly into this, Dr. Neeraj. Now, how would you emphasize in keeping the publishing as an example or any area which you want is, how is a life cycle important and why should we track it? No, absolutely. I mean, it becomes a very kind of a logical process to, uh, to kind of market your content, which which starts from a basic uh, rule of how to plan, basically. So for planning, obviously you need to analyze uh, the, the kind of uh, business goals you have, the kind of business you are into, uh, then, then align and match the content management strategy with your business. So it starts with a simple planning of, of, uh, of the whole team, uh, followed by, obviously there's a team uh, which should be in place to kind of you know, develop the content because that would become the backbone uh, uh, for for the end consumer of the content to create capture collect data you know do primary and secondary research of what kind of content the end user would love to read and then uh, curate the content from scratch or uh, you know maybe repackage the existing content in that format which the end user would love to read then obviously controlling and deploying the content which is followed by all kind of marketing strategies you have for your team uh, so this is i think the overall process and then you have to probably uh, put a backup uh, uh, to your content you know re repackage it again uh, rephrase it learn unlearn again and these kind of processes have to follow by each and every organization not only publishing but uh, life sciences automobile industry it industry okay. they basically remain the same for for uh, for the whole uh, content strategy management so staying with this if i may ask you what are the key aspects of great content that drives readership okay so i mean it it all depends upon because uh, even if you're targeting a particular audience there are further sub segments in the audience uh, so age could be one criteria uh, sex could be one criteria with respect to some some businesses i would say uh, but the utmost important uh, thing for the content is it should bring uh, the latest developments in that particular field in the front of the end user. So okay. it, it shouldn't be stale. It shouldn't be uh, uh, an old content. It should be crispy. It should be talking uh, about the about, about the recent uh, developments happening in that particular subject area. So that is probably what I feel even as a researcher or, or coming from pharma background. Uh, that is the kind of content which probably I, I would also love to read which enhances my skill sets, which uh, increases my knowledge about a particular subject area, which uh, kind of educate me on what's happening around the globe or what's happening around me in that particular uh, industry. That means uh, when you're talking about a great content and what drives readership, uh, today, what we also experienced, Neeraj, I've been sharing with you, people are exposed to a lot of information. Not in doctors, general public, if I'm talking about a school kid also, he or she has access to information, data. Today, if I'm talking to my son, he has a lot, lot of information about an institute or about an opportunity, which I need to sometimes catch up on. Okay. So that means it is, oh, I'm trying to read and dive deep into what you mentioned. Today, the content has to be well researched have to appeal to an informed set of audience who have access to information at the click of the button. Okay, so any segment, be it finance, be it any area, the person can go online, do a comparison, do an analysis, and will stick to his or her area of interest. So that means the content life cycle in terms of refreshing, revisiting, realigning it, reworking it, modifying it, needs to be done as a constant uh, on a constant grind and according to taste and likes we have to keep on identifying using ai systems and others and it can be accordingly curated and messaged across wonderful that was great uh, one, before of the, the, one of the things one of the things uh, one of the things which i can add over here sandeep is yes. uh, from my experience in uh, uh, selling into pharma companies yes the content is being curated or uh, you know coming from an authority if the content is coming from uh, maybe a national or a global association or a society, if the content is being curated by experts, then that carries a lot of value. Then vis-a-vis -vis the content which is created by um, 
a standalone medical writer or a standalone blog writer or somebody, if that content is coming from an authority that carries a more value than, than, than the normal content. True. So with that, I'm tempted to ask you one thing. How are publishers and life science companies shifting gears to differentiate the content and its visibility? Yeah, so I mean, as I, as I mentioned earlier, from, from participating in B2B conferences, from distributing brochures and uh, whatnot, you know, in print, companies have migrated to not, not only the, the social media marketing, but also uh, into specific marketing, which, which is being offered by companies like ours. Uh, I've seen uh, in last last uh, one decade very closely. Uh, believe me, I mean uh, about uh, about ten years ago, pharma were mainly focusing on bombarding doctors with uh, paper. Right. I mean uh, it was it was foolish to see that uh, you are uh, on an average a particular diabetologist is getting twenty books on diabetes on a disease which has been he has been practicing since last thirty years. So you're trying to educate a diabetologist on, on the differentiation between type 1 and type, type 2 diabetes. So this was kind of a foolish marketing which was done by almost every company 10 years ago. But over the last 4-5 years, they have you know, migrated to uh, multi-channel marketing, not only involving print inputs, although that is much needed, you know, that's a door entry to a doctor's chamber, but also moving on to specific targeting which is done online. And there are specific companies uh, uh, which are offering those services to pharma companies. Uh, Beat Practo, Beat uh, Medinate, Beat Medversity. There are lots of companies available with specific courses, uh, specific pieces of content, and they've got huge audience, hundreds and thousands of doctors on their platform. So once hundreds and thousands of doctors are coming to the platform, it becomes very easy for pharma to carry their voice to those kind of an target audience if they work very closely with these kind of companies. So that is the shift which has happened over the last couple of decades. From moving on from print only to a hybrid model and then in, 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 in the COVID era, it was totally online. I mean, uh, pharma were all focusing in creating their own learning websites, creating yeah. their own learning platforms, creating their own learning hubs, which are meant for doctors in enhancing their knowledge, doing CME, CPDs. Almost every company has got a, either a corporate initiative or, uh, you know, at least top divisions or top revenue makers in each of these companies are having their own informative websites, which are loaded with the medical content. And they, are, they have got their own ways and means to attract doctors for to, towards that, that kind of websites. And so, forget, forget to mention, there are lots of apps available offered by different companies in educating the doctors. So that is how they're you know, taking that particular content to an RC doc, uh, doctor's knowledge, uh, yeah. ultimately to the doctors. No, you're so true. I'll just share an experience with you, the strategy which you mentioned about uh, pharma companies. I came across two segments. One is, uh, I cannot name them, I don't know whether it's right, right to name them on this forum. One of the public sector unit in the country. I had two rounds of meeting with them. They are heavy electrical manufacturers. I was surprised. Uh, I was talking about a digital product, as you mentioned over here. They talked about, okay, fine. Uh, can you all provide where we can address 1,500 to 2,000 people at the same time? I don't make on why. And when we talked about demonstration of various video conferencing tools, they asked, we need an integrated learning management platform too, which you mentioned, for content and these things. So if you look into it, they're doing it. There was another banking sector. The banking sector has a similar thing. We need streaming capabilities. We need learning management platforms, not only for learning. They too are sharing content, enriching people, educating. So what you pointed out immediately hit with me right now, and I thought of sharing them. So in fact, uh, the way the content has been reached out or people are or companies or big corporates are reaching out to the segments is not only educating and informing, they're looking at much more innovative ways using the digital platform. Great. That was a very important point to share. No, in, fact, in fact, uh, when pharma was giving only print inputs, there was uh, no way out they could measure the ROI. And then okay. they, when they migrated to online stuff, you know, they started measuring ROI based on, you know, how many likes they got, you know, how many people attended the webinar and things like that. But now they have moved into another parameters. It's good that, you know, thousand doctors come on board and listen to your webinar or, you know, see your content. But much more important is how many out of those thousand doctors uh, shift their prescription behavior. Right. You know, how many of those doctors start prescribing your drugs with your uh, competitors? That is more becoming more important with, with time. Very true. So you're able to productize it. 
Great, great. At this juncture, since we have a couple of few minutes left, anybody has any query, uh, can please raise it. So, so uh, Dr. Neeraj, we heard uh, 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 discussion was uh, primarily with the medical, you know, field. Uh, yeah. That can be obviously replicated to the other industry as well. But, um, you know, uh, what we generally from the finance sector, uh, where the uh, definitely medicine also is a trustworthy industry to build up trust and then to figure it out. But uh, in the finance industry, it's mostly uh, they go with a word of mouth than what is available in the in the in through uh, social media marketing or, you know, the, 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 the different modes of advertising. So how you can change the behavior or the pattern uh, who are not so tech savvy uh, uh, because uh, one thing is that if he has to be in internet then only you can push uh, uh, Dr. Neeraj, uh, uh, before you answer can i i'm tempted to answer him first yeah sure sure please go ahead <laughs> uh sanjeev what i saw in the last two months obviously dr Neeraj has been into technology quite in depth uh, that is why I took the lead before he comes in. The sectors which I mentioned, finance, I'm seeing currently, including all kinds of operations, is whole hog investing into uh, technology and reach out in all operations, which I'm there. But yes, the challenge which you have put across, I will come to it later. Let the challenge be answered by Dr. Neeraj. I'll be come back to that. Yes, Dr. Neeraj, first, please. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's no way out. Uh, you can be left behind, I think, uh, with respect to every sector. Uh, someday or the other day, you have to come back to uh, online only. Uh, I mean, all the fintech companies, uh, all the insurance companies, and although that's not my expertise and not, not my sector, but ultimately you can see uh, majority of the transactions moving from uh, manual towards online and these kind of platforms gaining more visitors every day. Although word of mouth is something which is very, very important. Ultimately, you know, reference from friends and other, uh, you know, colleagues and uh, other known people is very, very important. But apart from, uh, you know, B2B conferences, uh, distributing brochures and other things, I, I, I'm, I'm not aware about any kind of other B and Bs to reach out to such kind of people who are not net CV. But I can just pray for them that one day or the other, they have to come online. Uh, and uh, this is right. no way. So Sanjeev, you don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> on the lighter side of it. In, in fact, uh, what is happening, Sanjeev, I'm sharing with you. Uh, I was at one of these PSUs. I was surprised. Okay. And I was also in the bank in Punjab National recently, two large projects. And uh, uh, it was there through a telecommunication partner. The future going messaging system, which they are laying out right now, I was on to see what plans they have exhaustive content delivery plans in terms of educating digitally, in terms of financials, financial benefits, uh, what Dr. Neeraj mentioned about FinTech. In fact, today I had a call with ENY and it was about a FinTech initiatives which has been jointly done by bankers and uh, local universities getting into the space, which is there. So maybe it is on a uh, different stage right now, but going forward, what I hear Neeraj saying, because I, uh, since me and Neeraj was to work together uh, eight or nine years back, right, Neeraj? And yeah. yes, what Neeraj pointed out, it was completely print-oriented, content print-oriented, brochures, catalogs, which were no doubt about it. And maybe because of the scenario, what we see today, what tempted me to reach out to Dr. Neeraj and request him for this time was the huge metamorphosis organizations are undergoing at this juncture and trying to reinvent the communication strategy, which was there. You wanted to say something, if I'm right. Sanjeev, you wanted to say something? No, no, no. no. Uh, there has been a kind of, uh, I would say, uh, consumer change behavior. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah because uh, the technology has reduced the, the cost. That is definitely, there is a pressure. I, I, this is from the finance side, you know. So yeah, right. I was just discussing something. For that reason, I, I was delayed by 10 minutes is that uh, I was talking to a guy, uh, one of my counterpart in Middle East, and he is also working with a fintech company where, you know, the interface doesn't require any customer. The credit decisions are taken, you know, 
based on the country's data past data you know they are they are, they are gone into this kind of a this thing uh, uh, you know okay. what i can see there is a sea change in the behavior in last probably 4 5 years you know and we as and and the best part is that india is something uh, who are very tech savvy people you know why there has been a 3 billion uh, transaction uh, uh, why the other countries are lacking behind because of this fact but definitely i think the great work by dr neeraj he talks about such a beautiful point that uh, is all about the change behavior the expectation which is going to come and probably by 2023 we will change a, another leap uh, one of the data i was i was passing through the dependence on the on the tech uh, this is what dependent on the tech rather than dependence on the you know social media marketing and a change yes. behavior so uh, this going, this will going to a uh, the futuristic the paper will become a history you know uh, uh, so uh, same way i think uh, no, we may not uh, uh, like to open the pops or the 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 uh, the other things that uh, comes uh, cookies that are coming uh, but definitely the time will come that uh, the process will be said that probably if you use this cookies you will get this kind of a benefit so you know so for so on as we grow so this is my take on the entire thing but what is a very lovely thing dr neeraj then you have narrated the things very beautifully thank you narration actually thanks sanjeev for your valuable inputs do we have any queries any suggestions from anybody at this stage uh dr neeraj anything which you want to share with us Before yeah, I mean, as a as a concluding remark, uh, Sanjeev, you know, I remember uh, going to medical conferences and seeing senior doctors who are not net savvy coming to conferences, you know, sitting there participating in sessions, learning from that sessions. They have all migrated online because there there was no solution available. Forget about people who are of our age. You know, kids of age four and five have moved online. The whole world has moved online in last last uh, one and a half years. So there is absolutely no solution we can ignore. Uh, net or online and other promotional activities are happening although as you rightly said word of mouth would also be very very important in the aspect of uh, you know marketing for any any kind of organization no it's it is it is it is and see the fact is uh, dr neeraj we and you are interacting over phone and over this so, uh, over this uh, zoom media but we have not physically met sanjeev the same goes with you also for some time we haven't met yeah. which is over there and we have been able to connect Uh, it was lovely having you all over here uh, dr neeraj mehta thank you so much uh, thanks for your time uh, wonderful and thanks for sharing those uh, important and uh, exciting uh, experiences and transitions with which pharma sector and the publishing is going through and i think what you shared with us is very very critical uh, because content is what we bring across to our prospective customer segment or to our users to our partners so content is very very important today the basic learning what we understand from this discussion is i like to sum it up it has a life cycle of content which we create and we have to revisit the content it can be a video content it can be a text content it can be an audio content it can be a script anything or an image but it has to be specific to whom i am communicating and should be appealing and conveying some message for action which is there and with different kind of mediums which are there today digital we need to be more proactive and see what is scalable what is practical and pertinent right now and constantly work on it it is not about a large small or this company or that company the strategy can be different for different companies but the content has to be delivered that is there okay anything else dr neeraj well, that's all from my side i think uh... thank you so much for joining us have a nice weekend thanks everybody thanks sanjeev thanks shubham thanks prasanjit everybody